Morning folks. Uh, right, one for you. Uh, as usual, I, I, I'll just make it up as a go along. I prefer to work that way. It does limit the imagination. There is a, a certain amount that I can, or one can work from the, the imagination. Well, my imagination anyway, such as it is. Uh, summer trees maybe. A bit of sky anyway. Uh, right, but, uh, raw sienna. I'm going to use uh, Payne's Grey and a bit of uh, Ultramarine for a bit of sky, a bit of cloud. Oh no, it's a lovely bright day, and never I'm going to ruin it. This paper is absolutely superb. Okay. Want that a bit lighter there? Just clean, a bit of clean, cleanish water. Okay, we'll reclip. the medium height now I'm going to put in a bit of, bit of background while that's wet uh, a bit of blue a bit of paint grey a bit of red hills in the background. That's a bit of red in there. It's all the same. Okay, let's uh, put a bit of bit of green in there. Quite a bright green.
Right, let's uh, put in some background trees. Uh, blue. So if my headphones going in a way. When you're painting wet in wet, you need to thicken up the paint on the brush, otherwise it it will just bleed to nothing. You know, I'm not one for great detail, illusion does me, and just try to create an effect and sort of an emotional experience rather than a well. Watercolour lends itself to sort of a certain amount of abstraction because of the way the water reacts with the pigment and soaks in and blends especially with this, this lovely paper right, okay let's put in a bit of nice dark green now just in here somewhere Bluey green now, just Got a few hairs poking out the tip of the hake. This will all soften. Okay, I'll give that a try. I'll put some trees in there. So take your headphones off, folks. Go. paper is uh, lovely and flat, perfectly flat. Uh, right, okay, so we've got the large hake, try to get the bristles back together again, and dip the tip in, in the water, and we'll start to uh, put a Payne's grey. Well, the, the hake has split a little bit. I use a rigger.
Okay, well, I'll put a bit of dry brush over there, we can put another one here. Okay, with uh, a bit of a bushy one coming up out of here. Just a couple of spindly ones there. Good the small lake and we'll put some put some spring greens in there. Right, oh, the same the other side. Just dragging over the paper's quite it was, it was not rough, but it's a uh, it's really Good if you, but you have to be very gentle with the brush, otherwise you'll flood. Right there. Okay, we can put a little bit of shadow in, cast, I'll do that. But I want to put in some pure yellow. Put a bit of a, that yellow, because the paint is thick, it will stick to that background. So no gouache. In the brush. Uh, not a lot more I want to do with that. It's a very simple painting. Uh, anything I've forgotten? Uh, I don't. Mm, I might put a. Let's put a little bit of a bit of a bush somewhere here. Strong green.
just add a little bit of interest to that bit. Uh, now, that's quite a distance, you wouldn't really see a shadow, but I'll, I'll put something in that will represent a bit of shadow, see what happens. There we go, fiddling. When you're doing fences like that, just don't put everything in. Just leave it very sketchy. Let the viewer fill the gaps. You, in other words, don't let, don't let the picture do all the talking. Well, I'll give that a bit of a signature. Put a cup or two in. Okay, put a mount on it. Have a look. My water's either evaporated, I've had this on the pot since Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday Monday. Uh, no, yesterday. But it's, it's uh, gone down quite a bit. I'm sure my cat's coming up here and, and drinking it. But the, the pigments are not, not poisonous. Okay, well, there's a... Just a, a, a simple... rural scene. It could be looking from the sea, from the coast, In a part of the Chichester Harbour area, looking towards the hinter the hinterland, you see the hills in the distance. Yeah, some, something like that. Okay, well I hope you like it, folks, and I'll get this uploaded, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.